Hi, everyone. It's great to be here. So when I was little, I had the great benefit of living in a neighborhood that was filled with a ton of kids. And back in the late 70s and early 80s, before technology took over our lives, um, I had the chance to constantly invite them over, and we would do things that we typically did back then, like ride our bikes and play outside. And I was always the kid that wanted to amp up what we were doing and drive the excitement and bring a ton of energy. Always take a simple plan and turn it into a bigger plan. So when someone would suggest we would go in a pool, I'd say, great, let's pretend we're in an Olympic swimming competition. Or if someone wanted to listen to a song, I was organizing a big concert in one of our backyards. Or if someone wanted to play a game, I would say, OK, that's a fantastic idea. Let's actually set up stations. We'll put on a whole carnival. We'll invite everyone in the neighborhood. And we can actually charge admission, because it's going to be an amazing time. One time, one of my neighbors wanted to play cards. And I thought, OK. And I orchestrated a old school poker game in my dining room for a bunch of elementary school kids. And of course, we, I made everyone borrow their parents' evening wear and dresses and made it into a major production. And my parents learned this about me the hard way when one day, the same kids that were in that picture, um, they had suggested we build a clubhouse. We had a bunch of old boxes outside. And I said, great, I'd love to do that. But let's actually use my dad's car, because he always says it's a family car, so it's mine too. So let's use that as the clubhouse. Well, my dad, of course, was less than thrilled when he came outside and five elementary school kids had found paint from our garages. And we were literally painting his car with pictures, rainbows, and a big sign that said Avenue B Clubhouse. Uh, we searched to find that picture, but we determined that he must have been so mad in that moment that we actually don't have any photographic evidence of that. So I had the chance um, a few years back to reminisce about all of these stories when I had the opportunity to attend a purpose workshop with the Authentic Leadership Institute. And the goal of that workshop was to define your personal purpose and also talk about all the ways you can be living that purpose more and more every day. And your purpose is something that you're born with. You've always had it. It's that unique thing that makes you you. It's what you feel passionate about, you at your best. And this whole workshop was defined to kind of put words to that purpose and take you through an experience to kind of discover that. And then the journey in life really is to realize that purpose, step into it, and live it as much as possible. So the workshop, we actually worked in small groups of teams. And the first step was to talk about all the moments where you felt like you were at your best, the moments where you were living your best life, doing your best work, and felt great about yourself. And it was great to have the team around you, because you'd be thinking of those moments, but you'd also hear from the group where they felt you know, your eyes were really lighting up, all the qualities they heard about you that sometimes you're not even recognizing in yourself. Another step of the workshop was to also talk about the times where you were having your hardest life moments, either personally, professionally. And people talked about losing jobs, um, troubles that they had with their children, just the moments where you felt most challenged. Because in life, of course, we all know those are also the moments that you're learning the most about yourself. And then one of my favorite parts was talking about when you were a kid and all those stories. And that's where before life gets in the way and tells you who you should be and how you should act, what did you love to do? What were those moments where you felt like you were truly authentically being yourself? And the facilitator during the very end of the workshop was asking a question when it was just time to put words to that purpose statement for each of us. He said, how would you describe your purpose to your 10-year-old self? And that was a moment for me where it clicked, and the words came to life for me. And I defined my personal purpose to be the contagious energy that transforms a melody into a symphony, a game into a carnival, a flame into a fire. Because that defines some of those stories of my childhood and also what I know all my life I've been looking to do in whatever situation I was in. So there are a lot of ways where actually defining your purpose helps you in life. 
I'll talk about a few of the ways in a moment that I really feel like it's helped me professionally and personally. But one of the opportunities I had right after that workshop was to actually become a trained facilitator doing purpose workshops myself. And I have to say, that has been one of the re most rewarding experiences of my life. I know I'll look back and think that was a moment that really changed the whole course for me. And in particular, I had an opportunity to work with an amazing organization that some of you may know called Vital Voices. And they work to end gender violence across the world and help women advance in communities. And I met with 22 women from 22 different countries who were working to end gender violence and human trafficking. And they were the most spectacular women I have literally ever met in my entire life. And to this day, now any time I'm having a hard moment or I'm having one of those times where I don't feel like I'm living my purpose, I think about those women and I will continue to be incredibly inspired by them. Because it's amazing to be living your own purpose, but it's also that much more special when you can see that light up in someone else's eyes and know that you've helped them on their own journey. So just three quick things of how knowing my personal purpose has helped me professionally. And they're around making decisions, around and two other topics that a lot of other speakers spoke about today, which is courage and confidence. So when it comes to making life decisions personally and professionally, knowing your purpose acts as a great filter for those decisions. So just two months ago, I had the opportunity to join Audi as the chief communications officer. And as I was making that decision of did I want to join this company, I thought about purpose and I asked myself questions like, will this new opportunity give me the opportunity to live my purpose in a new and meaningful way? Is Audi the type of company that is looking to drive progress? Is it willing to transform itself? Is it willing to reimagine what it could be? Does Audi want to make an impact beyond selling cars to actually make progress in communities and make an impact on society? And when I was able to answer those questions as a yes, it made it really clear that this was a good decision for me. The second piece is around courage. And when you know your purpose, all of a sudden you have this obligation for yourself to live it, but also for all the people around you. So it gives you kind of the power to look at things differently. So for me, sometimes that manifested itself to something as simple as being in a meeting and knowing that there's that one question that everyone is having, no one's asking it, it's on everyone's mind, and I truly believe that it's always that last 5% that people aren't saying that is the most important information. So sometimes for me, that courage came through of having the confidence to ask that hard question. Other times, it's about, been around harder life decisions, like when I decided that to leave a job that I had loved and had been a great experience, but actually was no longer aligned with the values and beliefs that I knew I held dearly. So when that happened, even though there's lots of emotion that comes with a decision like that, when you know your purpose and you want to be aligned with values and beliefs and your purpose and living it as much as possible, those decisions become a lot easier and you could be a lot more courageous in those moments. And finally, around confidence. And I know as many of us in the room have grown as leaders, so many of us face things like imposter syndrome which is, of course, focused on that negative story that you're telling yourself of the self-doubt, or I'm not good enough to be here, or I'm, I'm surprised that I'm in this position. Those are all just negative stories that we're telling ourselves. And again, another one is some kind of self-imposed, ridiculous expectation that we're all supposed to be perfect in everything we do all the time, which we know intellectually, of course, that's not true. But what purpose did is it allowed me to take away that negative story and replace it with a positive story. And I knew as I started to live my purpose that I did not need to be perfect at everything. I only needed to be amazing at what I do best, at living my purpose. And that felt like a very freeing thing for me. So 
We've seen so many incredible women this morning, and you're about to see on this panel so many women that are living their purpose. And I want you to look for it, that moment where you see the spark in their eye, the moment you get chills when they're speaking, and also think about that for yourself. When are those moments where you're getting chills and you feel inspired and you feel like you are bringing all the right energy and living kind of your best life in that moment? Because that's purpose and that's powerful. Thank you.